Hello, everybody, and welcome to Turn to Page 17, the little comic shop of horrors. How are you doing, Rhapsody? Extremely well. I mean, except for the fact that, as I mentioned just slightly prior to the start of this, Little Comic Shop of Horrors does not fit the metrical structure of Little Shop, Little Shop of Horrors from Little Shop of Horrors, the musical. Indeed. And that is deeply grating at my soul. But I'm finding Salve in this super lizard that we're seeing on the cover and yeah. his just indomitable kind of stance there. He has an eight pack. He has an absolute eight pack, my man. It is well defined. It also feels like self contained. It looks like a yeah. pea pod has opened on his stomach, and you're just seeing eight peas on the inside, perfectly cylindrical abdominal muscles. Absolutely. He also has like a four pack on his legs. <laughs> <laughs> so between the two legs, yes. another eight pack. Another there. eight pack on How the legs. How many packs my man got? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, he's he's a he's a super lizard, but he looks quite angry. Mm. I this is going to be a plot. Are twist, we sure? I'm sure. Are we sure that we're not the super villain? I'm I'm never sure of that. When I wake up, I'm like, am I my own villain? I'm trying to think. Uh, if you do not have super lizard breathing down your throat at the moment you wake up, you you are at least not the most pressing super villain in the world at the time. Because Fair. this guy is on it. He looks a tent. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of, would you turn your tent to the beware page? I would indeed. <coughs> beware. Do not read this book from beginning to end. Hey, you've never noticed that comic store before. I mean, it's kind of dusty, but man, does it have great comics. You check out the books on a spinner rack and you spun into a comic book universe. What superhero do you want to be? Will the, super vir uh, will the super villains destroy you? Or worse, will you end up as an inkblot? If you follow the horror sign to the basement, look <laughs> out, you'll find horrors down there all right, but not horror comics. This scary adventure is all about you. You decide what will happen, and you decide how terrifying the scares will be. So, on a, in a lot of these books, we have had a situation where an early diversion has brought us to a point where, like, one of the paths just goes completely off the path entirely and has nothing to do with, like, the cover or anything. I feel yep. like we may have a book where no matter what we do, it's going to be relevant, which is, I'm excited about. It seems like a lot of like the super themed, like the super themed ones mm -hmm. are a little bit more consistent with that. I want desperately for this to actually take place with comic creatures. And I, it, it is sounding by this page here that that is going to happen no matter what. And I am mm -hmm. very pleased. So I'm I'm assuming they'll all be kind of like you know uh, melted plastic action figures left in the sun versions of their combat. Like there will be soap a man who uh, like yeah. cleans things and like because copyright still existed. No, 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 no. That was manufactured. You're right. They had Tarzan. I mean, yeah, legitimately wait, wait anything minute, can yeah. happen. Anything can happen. So t take a deep breath. Uh, cross your fingers and turn to page one to give yourself goosebumps. Does it say that in every book? Probably does. I believe it does. Oh. <gasps> and then I gotta cross my fingers. Oh, I'm holding clay in my left hand. I put that down. Actually, no, I'm gonna make a superhero. <laughs> All right, page you one. You a superhero while I will grumble. <clears throat> I thought after school clubs were supposed to be fun. You grumble. You love comic books and a comic book club sounded cool, but it's run by Horace Grumbacher. The dullest kid in school. How could someone who make a subject like comics so boring? Horace manages. He clicks his slide projector to a picture of a comic book cover. Here's the first issue starring Superdoer. <laughs> he drones. Today, it's worth nearly $2,000. He's right. That is a an impressive presentation to give boringly. That is like yeah, exactly. That is, that it, is, wow, it, 
even has italicized letters for thousands, so you're put, supposed to put some emphasis in it, but emphasis in droning is just like yeah. one thousand dollars. It's just it's the barest minimum of spice. Yeah. Either way, click. And here's the first appearance of Ballistic Bug. This comic goes for nearly twenty thousand. I, not to stop so many times, but like. To be able to say that in a droning voice, mm -hmm. this this person may be a superhero themselves. Either way. Ooh, you're thinking they're on the hero side? I think they oh, are, are so disaffected by reality. They fair. are at least an anti-hero, if not a straight-up villain. Absolutely. They may be villainous. As if any kid in this club could afford that, you think? The projector clicks again, and a horror comic appears on the screen. Excellent. You love horror. But Horus can even make horror dull. This issue of the seller of the scary stories went for $1,600. He lectures. An ugly face sneers at you from the comic cover. Yuck, it looks like a rotten pumpkin with warts. You turn away and notice the classroom clock. But how did it get so late? You run outside in time to see a horrible sight. Oh, no, you groan. What's wrong? Find out on page two. The school bus is already a block away. It left without you. Mm, thanks a lot, Horace, you growl. Because of his boring lecture, now you have to walk home. If you follow the same route as the bus, you won't get home for hours. You decide you better try a shortcut, even though it means going through a part of town you've never seen before. You walk and walk along your shortcut with every step you take. The book bag gets heavier. The area you're cutting through looks a little weird. The buildings are all old and dingy. The stores huddle together as if they're holding each other up. And the stuff in the windows is very weird. You pass a clothing store that seems to be selling Halloween costumes, even though Halloween is months away. That's pretty normal here. That's Spirit I don't, Halloween. That's Spirit Halloween, dude. <laughs> <laughs> creepy and those dolls in the toy shop window they look like vampires you're relieved when you spot a store for vacuum cleaners that's normal you think and then next to it hey a comic shop want to visit go to page three you step inside the comic shop is dimly lit you can barely make out the comics on the spinning racks beyond and deeper shadows are tables with row after row of boxes there are, these are the back issues where collectors look for treasures the owner stands behind a cash register he looks familiar with his round face and warts but you can't place him does he look like a pumpkin he grunts when he sees you <sighs> it's well who does he expect to come in and buy comics as you walk past him, the store owner, owner calls out to you. Leave your bags up here. You scowl. Why is he treating you like a thief? You think about leaving, but you'd like to like a rest from all the walking. And besides, you'd like to check out the comics. Strolling around the racks, you notice the latest issue of Major Disaster. You bought it just a week ago. This guy has a sticker on it for half price. Walking a little faster, you start picking up comic books. Doesn't the owner know what these things are worth? The deeper into the store you go, the darker it gets. A pair of bookcases block your way, but there's a little space between them. You see the light coming through the crack. Push on through page to page four. It's you a copy of Invaders from the big screen. I'm gonna give yourself goosebumps. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Please. Do you know what this is worth? You squeeze between the bookcases into an open area. A dusty light bulb dangles from the ceiling. In its dim glow, you make out another spinning rack full of comics. A sign taped to the top of the rack says, I, You uh, think this is a library? Look, but don't touch, or you'll be sorry. You peer at the comics on the rack. Whoa, is that the issue of Ballistic Bug from Horace's slideshow? This comic is marked for two bucks, and they're on the top rack. Is that the incredibly inexpensive, expensive copy of Super Newer? Then you notice something else. A doorway beyond the rack, metal stairs leading downwards to the basement, you guess. An arrow-shaped sign points down the stairway. It reads, Horror. There's also a tattered sign on the open door. You try and make out the faded letters. It seems to say, No admittance. Trespassers will be glomped. Glomped? What's that? You don't really care. All you care about is making a... Wait. 
You don't really care. All you care about is making a tough decision. Should you take a closer look at the rack or should you go down to the horror section? I mean, who's to say I don't want to be glumped? Right? Yeah, exactly. Glumped sounds like, you know what it, what it sounds most like to me is a big hug, right? Because yeah. wasn't that like Tumblr terminology that was for a really long? Glump? Something like that. I think so. To be fair, yeah, I don't know so if I want this... to be glumped. Then I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe the F twists it. Maybe it's it's one of those situations. Like one singular letter changes it deeply. I think I, that maybe. Do we want to go horror, or do we want to go super? Hmm. Wait. Oh, is the rack is super hot? I believe the rap is. Is super that the implication? Because downstairs is horror. Where I, we may not necessarily encounter comics, but yes, horror. I feel like they're both going to more or less be horror, so I would rather have superhero-themed horror if I could choose. Mm. On page 12. Let us find that if super that, lizard. I'd love to find the super lizard. You've got to see if that $2 comic is really the famous first issue of Super Doer. But when you grab the spinner rack, it starts to turn by itself. Still worse, the metal rack seems to have glued itself to your hand. You can't let go. Your jaw drops as the moving rack yanks you off your feet. You're dragged around in a circle and the rack keeps speeding up. Soon, to your horror, you can't touch the floor anymore. It's like some weird carnival ride. The rack is whizzing around. You're flying through the air. Hey! Hey, miss! You yell at the store owner. But the words are torn from your lips by a screaming wind. You feel as if you're caught in a tornado. You clench your teeth to keep from groaning. Your body is stretched out like you're a warm piece of taffy. You shift your grip. One hand touches a comic on the rack. The comics start to glow. And now suddenly, there's a new pull. You're being sucked into the glowing comic. Fly to page 103. Your body feels as if giants have been using you for a game of tug of war. You're sick and dizzy from the spinning, but you notice something is wrong. This world seems strangely flat. The colors are very bright. You peer up at an incredibly blue sky. Sky? Wait a minute, how did you get outside? Then an elbow jabs you. Someone steps on your foot. You aren't just outside. You're in a crowd. And what a crowd! You're packed in so tightly that you can barely move. The person behind you is actually breathing down your neck. Could this be a parade? What's going on? You ask. No one answers you. But a voice cries. Here it comes! A shadow falls across you. When you see what's blocking the sunlight, your eyes grow big. It's a gigantic tin can with arms, legs, and a head. No, it's a robot! I don't believe this! You gasp in a strangled voice. You better believe it. This thing is as big as a skyscraper, and it's striding straight for you. Go to page 69. <laughs> Yikes! You shout. Everybody run! You push, you shove, you try and get out of the giant robot's path, but the crowd is too thick, you're trapped. Hey! A whiny voice says in your ear. I know you. You turn and spot a familiar face in the crowd. It's a kid from school named Wally. Come to think about it, he hasn't been in class lately. Where are we? You cry. What's going on? Just got here on the Spinner Rack Express, huh? Wally asks. Okay, I'll make it as fast. You're stuck inside a comic book in the comic book universe. You roll your eyes. <laughs> yeah, right. It's true! Wally insists. Now here's the deal. We can shift from comic to comic using a magic word, but if you use it too often, he'll turn you into an inkblot. What? He shudders. It happened to a kid that I was with. Alex, he tried to leave this comic, and now he's just a smear. You glance anxiously at the robot. It's awfully close. We'll be smeared too if we don't get out of here. You declare. Turn to page 33. The crowd still isn't moving, and the robot is only a couple giant steps away. Have you used these magic words? You ask. Wally nods. 
I started out in another comic. I was some superhero's dopey sidekick, and then I met Alex, and we came here. All you gotta do is think of another comic and say the magic words. Uh, okay, so that gets you to another comic, but isn't there a way to get back home? Back to the real universe? You ask. Wally glances at you. I think so. A mad scientist can help you. But you'll have to talk him into helping you. It's always a mad scientist with goosebumps. It's always a mad scientist. Why are there any sane scientists <laughs> working on interdimensional <laughs> teleportation technology? <laughs> Come on. Is it, that's not a field that, like, I, it's, I don't know. It can't be uh, something that could be applied at just, like, a corporate environment, I guess. So it's like, eh. Well, yeah, exactly. Only the most passionate. It, it doesn't have a chance of making money. It can only end the world. So, of course, you only end up with the most passionate. Yeah, 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 the most passionate. The ones who do it for the love of the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. But you can barely hear him. People are screaming and bumping into you. But what are the magic words? You beg. Wally closes his eyes, thinking, and then he yells. Get shot! And he disappears. You think of the two comics you've been studying in the comic rack. Both of them have mad scientist villains. Convenient. Goosebumps. Will the magic words take you to them? Time to find out. You close your eyes to visit the world of super newer 104. Ballistic bug. Wait. To visit the... Wait. <laughs> to visit the world of super doer, go to 104. If you like mm. ballistic bug better, turn to 66. To be mm -hmm. fair, it doesn't say go there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. What if I like Ballistic Bug better, but I want to go to the world of Super Dua? I know, this is tough. <laughs> that's kind of where There's I'm no at. no option for me. Like, honestly, I, that, so, that's where I'm at. I, I, I like the idea of Ballistic Bug better, but I don't think I want to go to a world with Ballistic Bug. You know what? So, I'm hey. more than happy to go to Super Dua because I think it's going to lean into the superhero kind of realm much more strongly. It's true, it's true, it's true. 104. Get shot! You yell. When you open your eyes, you're standing beside an office tower that's be still being built. The crowd is gone, the robot is gone, you're all alone. This is bizarre. You mutter. A voice suddenly yells. Hands up! Of course you look up. A falling brick hits you right between the eyes and bounces off. You goggle in disbelief. That brick should have killed you, but it felt like a leaf being blown against you. You look down at yourself, and hey, you've grown up. You have all kinds of muscles. You have an eight-pack and two three-packs on your four-packs on your legs. <laughs> You're wearing what looks like a like purple long underwear with a big yellow SD on, on the chest. You not only switched comics, you turned into Super Doer. Cool. I've got to find a steel bar. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, dropped my, I dropped my clay man that I was trying to put a six pack <laughs> on. Uh, where are we? Oh, shoot. I've uh, got to find a steel bar. Uh, uh, you exclaim. Can I really bend it with my bare hands? Go looking on page 26. You glance around at the building site. There's a pile of bricks. There's a cement mixer. And then there's a bunch of those steel rods that you use to strengthen concrete. Exactly what you were looking for. You pick up a heavy bar, flex your mighty muscles, and yes, the steel bends like a thin wire. Hey! A voice yells. You glance up. A guy in a hard hat is glaring at you. <laughs> we were gonna use that bar! He complains. And now you ruined it! <laughs> you try and straighten it out, but you can't fix that last kink. Then an idea comes to you. I'll just heat this up with my magma vision! You announce. You stare at the bent bar cross-eyed the way Super Doer does in the comics. And then, sure enough, the metal gets hot. A little too hot. The middle of the bar melts away. Whoops! Guess you need to practice with your cool new powers. The workman looks pretty angry, but then he's distracted by a sudden burst of crashes and screams. Another guy in a hard hat dashes up. Super doer! He cries. Some horrible creatures trying to knock over our building! Leap into action on page 59! 
for a second you wonder what you're supposed to do, then you remember. You are a superhero. It's your duty to save the building. What about the people? I mean, <laughs> no, I mean no, 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 property. <laughs> just the property. Just the property? I mean, you leap up and suddenly you're flying. Wind ruffles through your hair. Your cape flaps behind you as you soar high over the building. And then you look down and your jaw drops. Just flying is incredible enough, but you didn't expect this. Something the size and shape of a Tyrannosaurus Rex is smashing at the building with ha its hands and tail. But the thing's scaly skin is made out of shining metal. And your cosmic ray vision what shows that there's machinery inside. The creature turns its glowing glass eyes on you. You expect an attack. But instead, the robot dinosaur says in a whiny voice, Oh, great! Now I've got the super doer after me! You skid to a stop in midair. You know that voice. Wally! You cry in disbelief. If you try and talk things out with Wally, go to page 25. If you rather fight him, go to 102. Oh, Wally! Wally! <laughs> Who <laughs> there? Knock it off! <laughs> I will rip your head clean off, Wally! <laughs> 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 uh, I, look, so I've seen these kinds of comics before, right? Yeah. And the ones that are kind of like, you know, you, you, you forget about them after the fact, they're a little bit more like popcorn. The answer is fight them. The ones you think about for the rest of your life are the ones where they have a deep conversation about the parts that they represent in some sort of philosophical debate. I think we should talk things out with Wally. We should have our killing joke moments. I like it. Let's kill Wally. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 25. With our words. With our words. Kill him with kindness and heat vision. You float in the air in front of the metal monster's face. Sort of looks like Wally, except for the size and the flashing glass eyes, the metal scales, the giant teeth, the tails, the dinosaur like body, the giant structure. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. Yeah. It certainly sounds Disregard. like Wally. Only louder and more like a Tyrannosaurus Rex and a little bit more booming and a little bit more mechanical. I can't believe the first time you switch, you become a hotshot superhero. He whines. I guess I'm just lucky. You reply. But you shouldn't feel too bad. Being a monster is better than being a stupid sidekick. Hey, true. Wally agrees. It is cool being a monster. With claws and legs and arms and tail and whip around and all that. A huge hand flashes forward to pluck you out of the air. Because a monster gets to do you in. Funny, Wally. You laugh. No, remember, I'm super doer. You flex your super muscles to get free. Nothing happens. You're still trapped in Wally's mo Wally mon- Wait, what? In the Wally monster's- Gigantic hand. Yikes! Turn to page 46. Wally! You cry. What are- Why are you doing this? We're pals. Well, maybe not pals, but we go to the same school. I'm sorry. Wally replies. But the monster formula makes me pet loud snore slave. He told me to destroy Superdua. Uh-oh, things are getting desperate. You give the Wally monster a blast of your magma vision. His shoulder begins to melt. Ow! Ah! Ow! He yells. I can't take this! Uh, I'm getting out of here! Guess shot! But when he yells the magic words, Wally doesn't vanish. A ripple runs through his giant form. The fingers around you feel strangely rubbery. His face looks runny. He's melting! Then you realize, Wally's time has come. He used the magic word once too often, and he's turning into an ink blot. You strain to break away, you can't get free. Holding up your hands in front of your face, you see with horror that you're getting runny too. Why? Bummer. Your Uncle Mel always called you a little squirt, but now you've turned into a big drip. The end. I... You know what? Like it's it's kind of it, it is a decently uh, funny uh, turn of phrase for the end, but they have to introduce your uncle Mel and the fact that he calls you a little squirt in order to set it up, which kind of undercuts it. I will also agree, though. Why are we melting? Why Does we this have like an area of effect? What is up? I mean, just like 
Yeah, shout out if you're going to use an AOE, Wally. Come on. Come on. Exactly. God, I mean. All right. Hey, I think that we should probably go uh, fight you. I want to kill Wally. Let's murder this man. Wally. Yeah. Page on that. Look for that. <laughs> 102. <laughs> 102. Mmm, school pal or not, you aren't wrecking this building. Never mind the people. <laughs> Just the building. You cry. Flying down like an arrow, you aim for the wall. Why do they keep the Wally monster's nose? You mm. already have your fist stuck out to deliver your power punch. But when you arrive, Wally isn't there. Desperately, you screech to a stop before your power punch hits the ground. Or hit, wait, in, before your power punch. Your way deep into the ground. You whirl to find a huge prehistoric space monster climbing up the building. Huge metal claws screech against the concrete walls as the Wally monster pulls itself up. You're ruining the scaffolding! The noise is about ten times worse than the sound of the fingernails. Sound of fingernails on a blackboard. And since your super ear <laughs> since your super ears are ten times keener than ordinary ears, it's downright painful. You'd better quit it, Wally! You've worn. You're beginning to annoy me. Keep up the fight. On page 97. If you'd call that fighting, then yes. The monster with Wally's face and voice reaches the top of the building. You get ready and jump. Whoops, you still need to get used to your new powers. You overshoot the building, speeding up high into the sky. Spinning in midair, you charge back. The Wally monster has reached the top of the unfinished building. Your fist goes back for your power punch, but this time you won't miss. As you zoom down, the Wally monster grabs a big steel girder that sticks up from the top of the building, tearing the girder loose. No, the building! He slings it over his shoulder like a club, or... Whack! Too late! You realize that Wally was holding the girder like a baseball bat, and he's using you as the ball. You grunt as the steel beam strikes you, even with your super skin and maximus. How many... This is, uh, this is unhinged. Even with mm -hmm. your super skin and maxa muscles, the impact knocks the wind out of you. Wally's swing also knocks you out of the construction site. Tumbling helplessly, you streak toward the horizon like a line drive. Swish to page 48. I just want to say that, like, previously we, uh, we sorry, we flexed our super muscles. We didn't mm -hmm. super flex our muscles, right? Mm -hmm. But now we have maxi muscles, right? Are we, like, leveling up over the course of the fight? I know. Like, we've got super maxi. Are we going to have giga muscles at one point? Ulta muscles. Yeah. Ulta muscles. Max I was going to say pico muscles, but that would actually be extremely small. <laughs> <laughs> I want some pico muscles. Pikachu. Yeah. Uh, 48. You spin out of control thanks to that shot from Wally. Wind blasts past you, making your cape whip about until it wraps around your head. You're ready to barf from all the tumbling, and your cape, your super cape, is super blinding you. Wait a second, you're super doer, and super doer can see through things with cosmic ray vision. You try that to wait. You try that slightly squinty look that super doer gets when he uses this power. The good news is you can see where you're going. The bad news is you're about to crash into a building. To use your flying powers to veer away, turn to 36. If you'd rather rely on your super skin and maximum muscles, turn to 94. Okay, uh, but if they're going to give us the opportunity to rely on our super skin and maximum muscles, I think we need to lean in. I, yeah, th this feels like the... Um, I feel like we haven't gotten a choice exactly like this since the very first give yourself goosebumps when it was like mm. you are falling off a bridge do you continue to or try not yeah. to i feel like we haven't gotten one this blunt but like in that case in that situation we were like yeah well let's fall and it was fine so like let's it was correct i, I want to know let's go to 94 let's try Let's do it. I also think that like one thing that's been demonstrated over the course of this comic so far is that every time we try and use one of our powers for the first time, we ultimately fail. Uh, yeah. And that here, we might find you try and use your flying powers and you pfft, straight into the wall. You are dead the end. Yeah. Uh, it's the most gruesome version they've had. It's very short. Uh, yeah. I think this other one will give us the ability to be like, you lean on your strengths. Yeah, pretty much. 94. Kerwham! 
you hit the wall with a tremendous crash. <laughs> and keep on going. At least your cape is off your head now. Bang! Crash! You smash your way through the other rooms in the building, but your super skin isn't even scratched. Amazing. Super even. You thump through one more wall before you come to a stop. Time for a little payback. You rocket through the series of holes that you already made in the walls. So as being very careful not to injure the building more. Quick as a flash, you zoom back to the Wally monster. Pow, boom, bop, biff. You unleash your power punch on Wally. Oh, hey, ah, uh, no fair. Wally whines. It's not my fault. I didn't want to be a monster. Pex Loud Snore turned me into one. Pex Loud Snore. Oh, it's supposed to be Lex Luthor. Oh, it took me a moment. Mm. <laughs> oh. You repeat, hmm, not only is he the top villain in the Super Doer comics, he's also a mad scientist, just like the guy you need. Over to page 57. He sounds like a man who would steal four tens of cakes. That's 40 cakes. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that? No. <laughs> it's, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a like teach kids numbers with uh, with Superman and Lex Luthor as his <laughs> ultimate crime, and it steals forty cakes, which is four tens. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's good. <laughs> it looks so good as well because it's like it's like a like a patissier's kind of like tray, and he's just running away with it. <laughs> oh, that Lex, that he's a card. Uh, fifty-seven. Absolute. You, I, the Wally monster. Ooh, he's upgraded now. It's a capital M now. Uh, the Wally monster suspiciously. Why didn't you ask Tex Loudsnore to get us out of the comic book universe? You demand. I didn't get a chance. Wally replies, sulking. The, sec the second I entered his lab, he got me with a creature creator juice. Uh-huh. Sounds likely. Hmm. Go and turn yourself into the police. <laughs> you order. I'll deal with Tex Loud Snore. Leaping high into the sky, you head for Mount Skull. In the comics, Super Doer never managed to find out where his arch enemy's hideout was. But since you read the comics, you little cheater, you get to know exactly how to get there. Minutes after leaving Big City, Big Gig, Big Gig City, <laughs> Big City, Big with two G's, Big with two G's, Big Gig City. You spot a mountain shaped like a skull. And you didn't find it? You fly into the giant skull's left eye. It's a cave that leads deep into the mountain. 20 feet inside, your path is blocked by a steel door. With your super doer powers, you know you can get through the steel door and talk with Tex Loudsnore. The question is, which power should you use? If you try your magma vision again, page 37, to test your strong breath, 68. I mean, I think that you may have the nail be hit on the head. Mm. That anytime we try something new, it always fails the first time. Because they're like, oh, yes. we have to get a fail in. We have to get an epic fail in once. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we'll not get an epic fail in for the strong breath. Also, it's not like ice breath or anything. It's just strong breath. Yeah, exactly. I'm thinking almost that like it will push the steel door and immediately squash Tex Loudsnore on the other side. like. Mm like blasting the, the steel door off of a safe and then it just flies into someone. Yeah. Okay. As long as it doesn't crash into the wall. <laughs> I would not stand for that. No, 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 I, no. Frankly, it was difficult for me to summon the parallel, the analogy of <laughs> thinking of a bank vault being blown open. Oh, Gosh no. forbid! <laughs> Gosh forbid! Oh... Those years of architecture school. Oh. Cherished. All to waste. I can barely watch Spider-Man 2. <laughs> um, <laughs> we should probably use our magnum vision again on page yeah, yeah, 37. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's give it a shot. Let's give Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll stick with the power I've already used, you decide. It seems like it's worked so well so far. Do you always just use the one that we've already used before? We have caught on to that pattern, and it seems smart so far, the book says. Mm. You stare slightly cross-eyed at the big vault door, the way Super Doer does when he uses his magma vision. Nothing happens. You try again and again. You stare so hard that your head begins to pound. You're getting angry. All you see is red. But you smell something odd. Scorching paper. Remember the time you burnt a hole through a comic book by focusing a sun sunlight through a magnifying glass? The paper turned brown, and then it burned. Suddenly, you notice the f that flat 
brightly colored world around you is changing color. Everything is getting brown. The sharp burning smell is growing stronger. Then finally, it hits you. You're in a comic book now, and somehow your magma vision has set the paper on fire. What? You suck in the breath to yell. <gasps> yes, shot. But when you inhale, the smoke sends you into a coughing fit. You can't get the words out. Flames crackle. Your body may be super, but it's only as strong as the paper it's printed on. It's getting hot in here. Wait, is it getting hot in here? Or is it you? Actually, it's the end. Wait. That's so ham-fisted. Yeah, that seems a little... <laughs> <laughs> is it getting hot in here, or is it you? Actually, it's the end. What? The jump? Yeah, the the end, sorry, from uh, from Metal Gear Solid, the end uh, is a boss and he's hot as hell by the end of this storyline and give yourself goosebumps. He's just real, real appealing. Absolutely. You know, it's appealing. My man trims his beard something sharp. Oh, stab somebody with it? Mm-hmm. Uh, 68 is a good way to go. Let's do it. To, to use a strong breath. You suck in as much air as you can, and then you let it out with a whoosh. As if you were blowing out the candles on the biggest four tens of birthday cakes you ever seen. <laughs> the door flies off its hinges and lands with a crash in the long hallway beyond. As you walk down the corridor, you find that Tech's loud snore has other defenses, all sorts of weapons that attack you. But you're super doer. Deadly poison gas only makes you sneeze, and Tech's loud snore's disintegrator beam merely gives you a terrible itch. Wow. You exclaim. This is incredible. You could get used to being a comic book hero. The hallway ends at another steel door. No problem. Winding up, you smack it with your power punch. See what happens on 136. The solid steel feels like silly putty under your fist. You keep pounding until you tear a hole in the door. <gasps> You've abandoned your ways. Then you use both hands to rip an opening large enough to walk through. You step into the mad scientist's lab. You recognize that Tex Loud... Wait, you recognize Tex Loud Snore easily from the comics. He's tall, skinny, and he doesn't have any hair. Instead, the top half of his head is made of a gleaming chrome dome. He's Tex Loud Snore, the man with the pop top head. He Tex Loud Snore, villain and monster maker. Super doer! He snarls. I don't know how you found me, but my latest invention can handle even you! The mad scientist hefts a test tube in his hand, then he throws it at you. Can you catch it? To find out, hold a 12 inch ruler straight. I. I. I uh, hold the 12 inch rule is straight up with your thumb and forefinger on the bottom at the one inch mark open your fingers to let the ruler drop and then catch it again uh, if you catch it between the one inch mark and the nine inch mark go to page 114 if you catch it between the uh, what the hell I don't have a ruler to you I also don't have a ruler do we want to use a d12 for this bad boy we could I do have since this is like let's find things that are at a school desk where you're reading it. I have a recorder mm. uh, <gasps> and that, it has that work perfectly. and it has uh, the holes so we can just do some mm -hmm. All right, yeah, just on. designate a couple of those top holes as the 9 inch and 12 inch mark and then see if you catch it betwixt the two with your thumb and forefinger on the bottom of the 1 inch mark, open it till it's I, I, mm. So it's uh, effectively holding it up uh, vertical over a uh, floor and dropping it and then attempting to catch it again before it hits the ground. So with theoretically, uh, with the, for... the fingers be on the 12 inch ruler straight up, hold on the bottom at the one inch mark. I. So I you're holding the ruler be, at the bottom yeah, and it is vertically standing up. I guess it'd be 114. 114, I, let's do it. Like, it's really easy. I don't know. It's not hard to do. I, I, th I think the uh, the exercise itself is meant to uh, train your reflexes to the point that you can specifically get it at the very end. Uh, and that is what people are attempting to do. But 114. Well, they should have made that more clear because I'm too good for that. Well, we'll find out. You catch the test too, but the top... <laughs> I would simply catch it. 
I wish I just caught it. <laughs> uh, you catch the test tube, but the top pops off. Poof! The world disappears into a puff of purple smoke. Your skin begins to crawl, your bones ache, then the cloud disappears. But no, it's just down around your middle. <laughs> the lab seems smaller. No, wait, it's you. You're growing. Oh, goosebumps. The purple cloud is farther down, and the roof of the cave is coming closer and closer to your head. That's 90 feet high, you think? That makes me... Your thoughts get jumbled as your head bumps against the ceiling of the cave. You close your eyes, bracing yourself to get squashed against the roof, but that doesn't happen. You've stopped growing. Looking down at yourself, you realize you've changed. Your skin is green and scaly. You have a thick tail, gulping. You run your fingers over your face. Oh, no! Bulging eyes, scales, sharp teeth, tusks. Tusks? What type of monster has Tex Loudsnore turned you into? Learn the worst on page 34. Tex Loudsnore cackles with glee. <laughs> How do you like my new batch of creature creator, Super Doer? It even works on you. He grins evilly up at you. I believe you're my finest creation. You're the biggest and scariest of them all. You take one angry, giant step towards Loud Snore. The mad scientist yells, Freeze, ugly! Your muscles suddenly lock up. You can't move at all. In fact, in fact, you fall, you nearly fall on your horrible tusked face. Tex Loudsnore puts his hands in his pockets and beams up at you. Best of all, my formula makes you my absolute slave. Now, you just stand there. Don't try and move a muscle until I decide what to do with you. You try desperately to move, but you can't. Uh-oh. Can you move on to page 67? We can't. I guess we got softlocked. Uh, we got softlocked by Tex Loudsnore? Oh, man. This needs to be bug fixed. If we can't, if we can't move, and then it says, "Can you?" Uh, well, let's go. To did, did, did they even play test this? Let's cheat. Let's cheat and go to sixty-seven, even though we can't move. Yeah, exactly. Whistling, Tex Loudsnore putters around the lab. He walks past you as if you were a huge statue. You can't even move your mouth to say the magic words that would whisk you out of here. Now he's working on some sort of formula. Smoke wafts to the ceiling of the cave, right past your nose. The smell is nasty. You twitch your nostrils to keep from sneezing. Wait a minute. Tex Loudsnore told you not to move a muscle, but you moved. Maybe the formula doesn't work as well as Tex thinks. Maybe this absolute slave thing is fading away. To You decide to test your theory. You try bending the little finger on your right hand. Of course, now that little finger is four feet long. The finger finally bends. Next, you work on your hands and feet. Finally, you can turn your head. The mad scientist is still working, and he hasn't noticed. How are you going to use your freedom? If you jump, text loud snore, turn to 73. If you keep still and spy on him, go to 62. Uh, I mean, the book encouraged mm. violence once. It has. It has encouraged violence. However, I wonder if he might be working on portal technology in order to send oh, us oh, oh. a supervillain into the real world. And mayhaps what we want to do, uh, a la Dark and Darker, is wait for him to open the portal and then... And then kill Wally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, if we have to kill him, we'll kill him. We, we <laughs> wiped out one mad scientist before. Mm -hmm. I'll do it again. Let's keep a, we, we need to keep a running tally of how many mad scientists we murder. I, 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 yeah, how many uh, mad scientists we murdered, but like also just how many felonies have we committed? Over oh the course of, like, my. How many straight up crimes? Yeah. Oh, that's, that is a good, that is a, that's a tough one. <laughs> Either way. I, I'm down with spying, being, be spying. Let's do it. Pretending... And we get charged under the Espionage Act. That is our next crime. Great. I mean, they can't try a lizard. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> a lizard? No, you can't. I've heard that. <laughs> Pretending you're still frozen, you watch Loud Snore work his computer. The huge, complex machine even speaks. New data entered from manipulation of Trans Universal Plagistan. <laughs> 
Oh, I've been there. It's nice. The computer reports. Huh? Oh, well. Just because the computer can speak doesn't mean you have to understand it. The mad scientist turns to you. I've decided what to do with you. He announces. I'm sent for another of my creatures. I'm going to send you both to destroy Big 2G's city. <laughs> you can't keep still any longer. This calls for action. You wait until Loud Snore turns his back. You lean down and scoop him up. In your dreams, Loud Snore. You growl. You can't do this. Loud Snore sputters. <laughs> I control you. Wrong, you reply. Right now, I control you. Whoa, this is pretty excellent. First, you tell him. I'm apparently something else. Whoops, I want you to change me back into the super duo. I'm still doing the voice because I'm quite attached. I mean, I think it makes sense. You just, you have that, you're yeah, just know, bigger. Uh, exactly, he's, he's some yeah. kind of beast at this point. But They're not going to pay another still voice in actor. in mind space. <laughs> Not gonna just yeah. You figure it would be a good idea to have superpowers while dealing with techs. And next But your next demand is drowned out. Thunderous footfalls echo through the cavern. What now? Find out on page eighty eight. The footsteps get louder, louder, and then one of Loud Snore's horrible creation stomps in. It's a dinosaur like creature made of metal and plastic. Well, and it looks a lot like your friend Wally. Loudstore points at you. Destroy this monster! He orders the new creature. Uh, but don't hurt me. Don't listen to him, Wally! You shout. He doesn't really control you. Huh? Wally's glowing eyes look confused. Hey, I'm not doing what he said. I guess he doesn't control me. <laughs> This whole plot hook, just like yeah. immediate, no wait. attempt to push back ever before. I, I just always assumed he told me, but he said. I just figured I wouldn't have a choice. <laughs> oh no, you grin. So where were we? You ask Loud Snore. Oh yes. You were giving me back my super duo body and demonstrifying my friend too. <laughs> oh, holding Loud Snore by the collar of his lab coat, you dangle him from your giant hand. All right! Screams Loud Snore, clinging desperately to your fingers. I'll turn both of you back! <laughs> now he's talking. Turn to nine to nine. You set Tex Loud Snore down. He runs over to one of the lab tables. While he mixes up some chemicals, you keep an eagle eye on him. Wally slides up to you. Do you trust Loud Snore? He whispers. I mean, he's a villain, a, a bad guy. He's also a mad scientist. You point out. You said that's what we need to get home again. Yeah, you can trust him if you wanna. Wally says. But I'm getting out of here. He takes a deep breath, then hollers. Get shot! Oh my. But instead of disappearing, Wally clutches at his throat and screams. He falls back against the wall, then his body begins to melt all over the rock. Horrified, you step towards Wally as he frantically waves you away. His screams turn to bubbling moans. Uh, what? He coughs out. <laughs> I tried to jump once too often. <laughs> I'm turning into an ink blot here. It's too horrible. You squeeze your eyes shut. Then when you open them again, all that's left of Wally is an enormous stain running down the wall and onto the floor. Yuck. Turn to page 106. That, there's what? one word, four letters, and an exclamation mark, but that is the most sassy that these have ever been. Yeah. Yuck. Yuck. Go to page 106. Yeah. No, like, mortified for my dead yeah. friend. Oh, man. My friend's paste. Yuck. <laughs> Ewie, Yuck. don't get on my Ew. shoes, oh, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to track any Wally home. <laughs> uh, well. Sorry, Wally monster. 
Molly Monster. Should have been more judicial with your cool teleporting abilities, man. Mm. Uh, Tex Loudstore stares at you from the blot that Wally has become. <laughs> there must have been something wrong with that batch of creature creator, he declares. Well, I'd better run some tests on you. We don't want anything to go wrong when I change you back. The mad scientist turns several weird instruments on you. He frowns. Hmm. My phenopticon's getting old readings from you. My formula reacted very strangely with you. So? You demand. Loud snore licks his lips nervously. Well, I can give you your super do it body back, but to do the job, I'll have to take your superpowers away. Well? You start to say. Oh, trust me, I know what I'm doing. Loud Snore assures you. He starts mixing ingredients. In about a second and a half, he has another test tube in his hand ready to throw. Wait a second, you think? How do you know what he's got in there? How do you know he's not going to turn you into something even worse this time? If you trust him, 22. If you don't trust him, 64. So... Literally all that's happened is he threatened to send us and a friend to level a city, and then we threatened him. Yeah. I don't think he's truly rehabilitated. In his soul of souls, I don't think he is truly ready to reintegrate with society in the correct method, such as for us to trust him. I do. I think he's got... All right, let's trust cool... him. No! <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I am <laughs> more than happy oh. to trust this man. I, I learned a lesson oh, no. from uh, one of my favorite games of the last year, Citizen Sleeper, which is uh, being naive and trusting in all circumstances whatsoever. Pretty interesting choice, actually. Pretty pretty interesting choice to make. Let's do it. Okay, okay. I was mostly joking. <laughs> you seem and yet. Like, and yet. 22. Okay. I'm ready. You declare. Tex Loudsnore's test tube crashes down. New puffs of smoke explode around you, and you're surrounded by a rain rainbow-colored cloud. It feels as though a giant hand has landed on the top of your head. Down, down you go, pushed by the invisible hand. Your bones seem to grind together. Down, down. Now, now. Your muscles feel as if they're snapping. Every nerve in your body is screaming in pain there, there. I never should have trusted Tex Loudsnore, you think in horror. He just whipped up a potion to destroy me. Is this the end? To find out on page 98. No, it's never the end if it have to go to another page like that. Right? Oh, hmm? what? Hold on. It doesn't have the end of the end of the page. Huh? Yeah, yeah, continuing. Yeah, I think we're fine. Yeah, no, I, I, I clicked to the next page and it took me to the title. What was it? 98. Okay. Oh, uh, 98 is what we are looking for here. All right. The colors fade away. Tex Loud Snore walks up and pinches you. Ow! You yell. That hurts! You wish you were home in bed. You wish you were out of this comic. Of course you could yell. Guess shot? But you don't want to risk turning into an ink blot. Besides, your only hope of escaping from comic the, from the comic book's universe is to get help from a mad scientist, and here's one right now. <laughs> Loud snore gloats. I've done it! You've lost your powers! I didn't want them. You reply. Look, it's not who you think I am. I'm not who you think I am. I'm really a kid in trouble, and I need your help. As you explain how you wound up here, Tex Loud snore's eyes narrow. Incredible! He exclaims. Impossible! That's what I thought until it happened. You say, connected deeply to your voice. <laughs> it sounds like an interdimensional hyperflux. Loud snore muses. Very interesting, very interesting. Let me see what I can do. I, I feel like this character would totally keep that voice <laughs> until <laughs> yep. pow power's gone they're like until someone checks them on it they would keep talking that way <laughs> i mean they've maintained the body and really like it's not yeah. super strength or super speech that's giving them that it's just the barrel ass chest that these guys have the yeah. rob liefeld dimensions of these men the super confidence and the 
super uh, yeah the super confidence to speak and sound a bit silly exactly uh, and it right. not... knowing that no one will ever call you on it i've got nerves of steel here <laughs> more from the mad scientist on page 82 for the first time since touching that comic rack you feel a little bit of hope could this really get me back home loud store rubs his chin well, I need to run some tests on you to see if your atomic composition is different from ours. I mean, is the effect of the transuniversal flutter zone. You don't understand a word the man t mad scientist is saying, but you're eager to help. Just tell me what to do, you cry. Loudsnore points to a big metal box. Oh, climb in there. In there? Maybe it is your imagination, but the box looks like a big coffin. Is Loudstore really trying to help you, or is he trying to destroy you? Uh, isn't there some other way you could make these tests? You ask nervously. Loudsnore shrugs. Well, I mean, we could try the Hazafraza device, he says. He points to something that looks like a huge floodlight dangling from the ceiling. But I won't get as good of a reading. Do you want to get in the coffin? Page 130. You want to try the Hazafraza device? Page 75. So I think he gets the perfect reading by melting us down into our core ingredients and then just like titrating them out in order to figure out what we were made of. So I think it's Hazafraza, absolutely. Also, right. Hazafraza is an incredible name. I, I'm ready to get framalized by the Hazafraza. Regardless, I want to go to the page where the word Hazafraza is said at least once or twice. Mm-hmm. All right. The Hazafraza device looks much safer, you think. You stand under the floodlight on a set of copper and steel circles, one inside another. Tex Loudsnore starts pulling switches. The floodlight winks into life. Eerie, pulsing light shines down upon you. All of a sudden, you feel very, you feel very strange. It's as if your body is stretching. Hey, this is sort of how you felt when the comic rack was spinning. Are you on your way home? The lab fades away, but you can still see Tex Loudsnore dancing around cackling <laughs> I'm your worst enemy super doofus he shouts did you really think I was going to help you the Hazafraza device is a matter transmitter and I set it for the center of the star vega you try to scream but no sound comes out the lab is gone a brilliant gl glow surrounds you the glow gets brighter and brighter not to mention hotter and hotter too bad, but look on the bright side. At least in the end, you got to be... Or, sorry. At least you got to be a real star in the end. There we go. Uh, we died on the sun. We died in the sun. <laughs> 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 I, this explains why they had to take away our powers, because they didn't want to explain whether or not we were going to sustain ourselves for any period of time within the center of a galactic object. Yeah. This um, is... Yeah, I guess we were trusting too many times, but it really seems like the coffin's more trusting than the Frazzafraza. Uh, the Hazafraza, yeah. sorry, I almost forgot it. Oh, yeah. Well, a little framalized. I mean, um, where do we find our other Optune 130? Much thank you, much obliged. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, nervously, you climb into the metal box. Tex Loud Snore slams the lid closed. You lie there in darkness, and then suddenly you're surrounded by a blinding light. Like a camera flash. Then Loud Snore opens the box and helps you out. Well, your story seems to check out, he admits. According to my readings, your atoms don't belong in this universe. Can you find out a way to send me back? You ask. Loud Snore's smile is evil. Maybe. Yeah, just maybe. And if I do it right, I might get rid of my super doer forever. Every other time I kill, he becomes back to life later. Mm, how will you do it? You ask, a little alarmed. Well, to escape from this dimension, every atom of you, and of the superdoer, must be destroyed. Loud snore declares. Your teeth chatter as you repeat. D -d 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 destroyed? Loud snore nods. That will free you from this comic, and me from the superdoer. Ha <laughs> ha. Wait. He grabs your arm. 
just stand here in front of the unconfabulator and don't move. Uh, try to try this route home. One twenty-two to try and escape before your atoms get destroyed. Go to page ninety-six. You know, I mean, I'm actually a little nostalgic for some atom destruction. It has been a while since I've been in the center of a giant fusion response in the sky. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, try the route home? Yeah, I think we've got to try this route home. I mean, I trust him. I think he's a sweetie. Yeah, exactly. It's not like he's betrayed us ever. No. Oh, my God. I, this, thank God. I thought that we were not going to get one of these in this book. You swallow hard. Go for it! You command. Tex Loudstore hits a button. Streaks of blue lightning crawl along the barrel of the unconfrabulator. You close your eyes and stand absolutely still. Hey, you thought having your atoms destroyed would hurt. Instead, you feel light, incredibly light, as if the slightest breath would blow you away. You open your eyes to discover that Tex Loudstore's laboratory is gone. Instead, you're floating among tiny bright spots that look like stars. They glow brilliantly, red, blue, yellow against the solid blackness. Giggling, you swoop upwards. Multicolored stars twirl around you. Higher and higher you go, baby, until the colored stars blur into a bright, harsh glare. You don't feel weightless now, but heavy, clumsy. Staggering around, you go on to grab a door handle. You stumble into a tiny store packed with vacuum cleaners. An old man with long gray hair grabs you by the arm as you almost fall. Oh, you okay, kid? He asks. Stagger over to page 45. Kid? You peer down. You're not super newer anymore. You're just yourself. Hey, this is a vacuum store that was next to the comic shop. I was trapped in the comic shop. You gasp, pointing. You couldn't have been. The old man declares. Why, well, the black place has been closed for 15 years. Huh? <laughs> you describe the comic shop owner. The old man gives you an old look. Well, that does sound like Milo, but he died 17 years ago. <laughs> oh, have you traveled in time? You ask for today's date. It's still the same day as when you left for school this morning. You dash outside, heart pounding wildly. The stores all look the same except for one. The windows of the comic shop are boarded up. The nails on the plywood panels are all rusty. The shop has obviously been sealed up for 17 years or so. You head for home, totally creeped out. Could it have been a dream? It seems so real. One thing is for certain, you'll never take another walk through this neighborhood, and you'll hope you'll never, ever find yourself in a comic shop of horrors again. The end. (gasps) Comic shop, comic shop of horrors, comic shop. It works! There you go. You found it in the end. In the end, indeed. Woo! Rita. Yeah. This is absolutely my favorite of them so far. With like, like it breaks the scale. The rest of them are worried about like getting curved. It is a good one. It was a really good one. I also just, I just had a great time. I don't know. So it's, it's like solid, relatively small cast of characters, each of them having very, very definable traits, kind of like archetypes in this kind of a story, right? It was a rel- like quite a unique version of this story. I haven't seen this yeah. like version of the you know, person goes into the art kind of story before, and we've seen many different versions of those over time. This was really exciting. It was also really yeah. fun, and they even got in one hard action before the end there. We swallowed hard. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just happy that, like, this is why I look forward to this, like, the ones that are super clearly themed in, like, mm. a, in setting. Because when it's yeah. themed based off of a specific character, it seems really easy to have it just be a normal story that happens mm-hmm. to maybe feature that character. This was totally, like, it was comic book through and through. Yep. Which I did really enjoy. Maybe it wouldn't have been if we went for the horror section, mm. but. We didn't we'll have do the that scene on purpose. To page. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that was a very good time, a very enjoyable time, a very I liked it time. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I it's, yeah, I I mean, I had to even interrupt the end of it to say this is definitely my favorite so far. Absolutely, hands down. Yeah, very very <sighs> good. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to think what my other favorite would even really be. Like, uh, 
because there, there was a couple that had like really good i don't know i didn't there's something about the old dr eek's lab that i that tickles mm-hmm. me uh yep. there was werewolf woods was fun werewolf woods was fun night and screaming armor had the most like we actually had to solve some stuff that that was fun because it was a diversion mechanically Wait no, not not night yeah. and screaming armor. Not night and screaming armor. That one was the one that was really long. Yeah, uh, that was the one we had to loot back. No, what in was time, the one I'm thinking? The Curse of the Creeping Coffins. Curse of the yes. Creeping Coffins. That was the one that actually had like some mechanical like puzzle stuff that I. That one had the most like going on with that that I was excited by. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know, but the, just every every single time. Oh no, the magician's curse. I like the magician's curse a lot, which, uh, is again a similar thing where it's like the. Th- the setting is the main like thing that sets it apart and then they really have fun with it you can tell yeah exactly it's so much easier as you were saying when they give you this really really strong setting rather than a strong character to build around because you are always within that setting and that setting encompasses so much versus a character that you may not encounter or may encounter for an exceptionally short period of time depending on the path you're going down yeah. I also think that unfortunately the, the 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 ones that have been most strongly themed so far have been the ones that have least often had uh, many puzzles uh, and most of them tend to be quite like they they are very contiguous like there is no point from one to page to another where I'm like and suddenly you get picked up by a giant hand like you know yeah. every <laughs> scene follows perfectly from the previous yeah. one there's no loading screens in this story yeah yeah, um, yeah. so we I got like picked up by almost tongs. like you lose yeah, exactly. It wasn't tongs. Oh my, I even erased the fact that it was tongs. It was tongs. That was <laughs> yeah. too outlandish for me. Yeah. Yep. We got picked up by tongs, and then the world moved around us, and suddenly we were in a city. That yep. was that was a and real no thing. Questions. And no None. questions. And that was supposed to be one of the more grounded books, I think. I mean, like setting wise. <laughs> by the end of it, we were put back down on the ground. That is yeah, as yeah, much yeah, groundedness yeah, as was going on at that point. Didn't mean to interrupt, but, but yeah. Oh no, not at all. And the I feel like there is a little bit of a trade-off of like the very strong setting gives a very contiguous story quite effectively, but it also then doesn't allow for as many divergences within the singular path. Like it felt like we were basically, you know, death or true line um, mm-hmm. for that, which I think is totally enjoyable. But I also think there's another version of Goosebumps, which does focus a little bit more on the puzzles, does focus a little bit more on a character, does focus a little bit more on these kind of like tropey intangibles. Yeah. And they each have their own joy. And I'm loving discovering them over the course of this podcast that, with you. It's a great time. That's the thing that's so wild. Like I, one thing I did not expect from this was just how like there's such a distinct flavor of Goosebumps, mm. like in the writing and everything like that, that is very that is a through line throughout them. But like the books themselves have very strong identities structure wise. That's really interesting. That Mm -hmm. is so weirdly dissectable. Like, I don't know. Like there's the, uh, the one with the mummy and we were in like a section of, you know, kind of in Egypt and it was the branching paths were laid out more windy and weird. And like, there was lots of failure states, lots of Mm -hmm. tiny failure states. It felt uh, like a weird tree root instead of like a clean path. And there's of course, nine screaming armor where half of the book literally has no win states. Which was like, there's just structurally, there's so, so many divergences. It's neat. But uh, speaking of all of the different books, (laughs) segue hey Mm. (laughs) there are still a couple that we do not otherwise have access to and this is kind of like a uh you know all hands on deck if you happen to know where to find these specific books or you have these specific books and can somehow scan or supply them uh we have an email that you can contact us at turn to page cast at gmail.com We've had some lovely people who've already helped us track down a lot of them, but the remaining ones that we have no leads on or are otherwise incomplete are as follows. I uh, actually, Rabs, you want to read them? You have the list. Do you want to go for it? Absolutely. We are still missing Invaders from the Big Screen, Hocus Pocus Horror, Ship of Ghouls, Into the Twister of Terror, Zombie School, All Day Nightmare, Return to Terror Tower, One Night in Pain House. Revenge of the Body Squeezers, and Weekend at Poison Lake. Yes. 
So yeah, if you if you have those on your shelf and you have like the means to help get them like documented in history, it'd be fun to like have this podcast preserve these books online in some fashion like if we could help do that that'd be very cool on top of the fact that it just would be great if we could uh get through the rest of them we have a lot more of them than we thought like when we started doing this we we got a lot uh, access to a lot more thanks to lovely lovely people reaching out and and, uh Mm -hmm. helping to guide us and and help us with that but yeah if we could like add more books to like an actual archive for this preservation purposes that's extremely cool i would love to do that just like beyond enjoying the books ourselves on the podcast (laughs) so exceptionally true and as we found while we've been looking for copies of these that may have been squirreled away somewhere on the internet there is an avid community of people who are looking for these Mm -hmm. (laughs) consistently yeah there there is a big there's a there's a big demand for like getting them archived and things like that um so if you want to help out with that, if you have any lead, if you have any ability for that, um, do let us know. Turn to pagecast at gmail.com is probably the best way to do that, to contact about that. Uh, that's where we've gotten the uh, yeah the, the email so far. It's been very, very, very appreciated. Like every single time we get the new email, it's like there's a very distinct brand of <gasps> that gets uh, mm-hmm. audibly gasped when the, that email gets read. So like, yeah it's just yep. thank you Rito, Rito will just gasp instead of reading the title line and i just try and figure from the gasp and the length of the gasp the height of the gasp okay what have we found is it ship of ghouls is it into the twister yeah. oh no it's this other book it's it's difficult but you can get it down to the very specific title of the novel if you listen for the it's gasp. true it's true it's true like the, the bigger the gasp like the closer it is to us needing it <laughs> in, <laughs> in the chronology like right now like all hands on deck invaders from the big screen would be the uh the most pertinent on that list like uh, as in it would like it would come up the most quickly that and the um the ones that have like the actual kind of more game book elements to them uh which i think mm. is uh what return to terror tower pain house revenge of the body squeezers Wick- weekend at poison lake i think i don't know but either way, any any lead helps, anything like that. It's been, uh, yeah, I've just loved doing this podcast. It's been so, so fun. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know what else to say. If you, if you enjoy the podcast, if you're listening to this on YouTube, you're, you know, want to check out the YouTube page for Turn 2 Page itself, youtube.com slash at symbol, the at symbol, Turn 2 Page cast. You can find the official YouTube channel for this if you're watching it on some other place or you're. I uh, want to help out in some way and you're listening to it you can go help s- by subscribing over there all that stuff and leaving reviews on whatever streaming service you're listening to it on all of that is greatly appreciated uh to help keep this going and getting it to more people so yeah deeply much and truly appreciated y'all yeah anything else you want to say to our d- bewarned readers uh, only one, and that is a little teaser about what we might oh. be seeing in the next episode, and it looks like next up is is this the next one return? No. Attack No, okay, so it's listing it incorrectly in this one. Attack of the Beastly Babysitter. Uh ooh, it looks like uh That's a that's a rat. That's a big dang rat. <laughs> <laughs> mm, we we have a little bit of experience with that before. I think we will be well prepared Absolutely. for the attack of the beastly babysitter in the next episode of Turn to Pain. Yes. Well, until such a time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bleh. <laughs>